Hi, this is Fernando from Calvo Geospatial and I'm going to show you the workflow for creating floor plans and elevations and sections uh, with the um, buildings plugin for Trimble Business Center. As you see here, we have different options here. If we go to buildings, we have all the options here for settings, for floor plans, for sections, etc. So the first thing we would do is to define our building. So you see we can work with plan views, with 3D views, with, with station views, with cutting plane views, etc. So wherever you pick, the software will read the coordinates and we'll use it for each independent function that, that we have. So the first thing is to go to building. So here's where we define the, the, the floors and the elevations if we want. So we define that we want a, a ground floor, so we can see it here or in the cutting plane view. So we go here to cutting plane view and open it. So we, we see all the all the heights there. And we see we have a, a, an underground, a ground floor and two overgrounds. So we say here two overgrounds and we create the layers. So we click here and we will see on the left side that we have created a lot of layer groups and inside each layer group we have the individual layers that we can use for creating the the different elements as you see we have elevation zero for all of them i can start defining the elevations this is the zero zero for me and at the same time we could we could create a cutting plane a cutting plane which will be created for example, 1 meter 20 above this elevation that we are defining here. So we would cut the, 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 the point cloud at this height. Then for the 0, 1, I click here, for example, at standard elevation. For the 0, 2, I click here and assign the level. And for the underground, I go and click here. So I have defined all the levels. In case my project has any rotation, I could already define it here, but we don't need it at the moment. So the next step would be to go to settings. So we choose the plot scale, for example, 100. And then what we want to see, if we want to create hatches for the rooms, then for the room stamp, if we want to see the name, the perimeter, the area, the height, etc. And then also the prefixes and also the layers where we will save the information and also the text style. I do it very quickly so you can see it later on when we use the proper, the proper function. Okay, then the next step would be to define the layers where we want to create each individual element. So I do it also very, very quickly for the walls, for the outer walls, for the doors, for the windows, columns, beams, symbols. I'm going to draw first the, the ground floor, therefore I'm choosing zero, zero. The stairs, the points that we will create. And also if we want to create sections later on, we could define it here already. Okay, and once we finish that, so we can start drawing our floor plan, so we can close whatever windows we don't need. I don't need a 3D view, for example, and then I can also choose the, the view work with filters or whatever, or I can say show the, the outline and also I prefer to, to work with, with grayscale. So the first thing to do is to create walls. Then we choose the floor and choosing the floor, we read automatically the floor level. And if we want to create the floor heights or not, so the first we would start with the outer wall. Then we choose either free or author project. Free means two points per wall. An author project is perpendicular lines just with a, with a point per wall, as you will see right now. Here and here. So you see only one point per per wall. And then we, we click on close. So we have the outer wall and we would start with the inner walls. So we uncheck this 
and start with the with the first room which is this one the entrance so we choose the the proper one hall for example and then we start clicking first point second point third point fourth point and we close so we see the text depending on the scale that we chose so we will see the text bigger or smaller so we can change it so you can see it we change to 300 store and then once we do the next room we will see it which is now toilet and do the next room first second third and fourth and close so we see the text is a bit bigger and we see the area and the perimeter and so on so we can do it very quickly i just keep the same the same room type just to do it a bit quicker everything but obviously you can change from room to room if you need it so and we close so we would have all the all the walls and the next step would be to create the the doors and windows so we can go to door it shows me automatically the the last use floor and the last use room and then we can choose which kind of door we need so for example we start here with this so we can see the station view here and we see which one is here so we can change again to to show inside for example see all or see inside and this is what we would use to to pick the height of the of the door so we click the first wall where the hinge is second wall then left point where the hinge is point for the width and then the door opening the side to which the door is opening if I want the, the levels also for the floor, for the top, etc., I can just change here again to, to see all or see inside. And then I can say I automatically have the, the floor level. So I just click here on the top. So we have the, the C coordinate of the top. And then I can insert the, the text wherever I want here so i see the width and the height because this is what i decided to to show in my in my in my floor plan and so on so we can continue with the doors i can just click here here then hinge point the width and the door opening and if i want to create the the elements again and also here and so on and then for the windows depending on the on the type of window for example so we can go to window we choose the the window type in our case for example this one so the same first wall second wall one point for the insertion point second point for the width and then two points to define the the position and the same so we can move to to the station point And we see here the C level, the C level, and the top level. So we can click here the C level and the top level. So we have the the width and the heights, and then we can insert the point, insert the text here. So we see the width, the seal height, the, the window height, etc. And so on. So we have all the functions for columns, for beams, for example. It's very interesting. If we have some beams here, for example, in, in, in the living room, we can choose different boundaries. We can have different lines here that we will use to extend the lines that we create. And then we click two points for the orientation of the beam. And then the line is automatically created and extended to the boundaries. And from now, I can create as many parallel lines to this one as we want so we would see here the 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 beams so we could 
just click there and the next beam is there and the next one is there etc so we can create very quickly the 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 beams inside the room and also we could define the the bottom point the bottom elevation of the of the beam so we would see here the 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 height information then for symbols we can start the symbols and we can work very visual and very quick so i can define the the, the elements that I, I want to use for creating for example toilets wc1 is the the one that i will mo use the most so i can assign it to the button one then i can define some sync for example this one i assign it to button two so i can be very quick in inserting them so for example now here i can close this one and then i see i have a sync here and a wc here so i can say i want to insert this where aligned to to this line and then i just click here so i have the the symbol then i want to insert the wc so i click the the proper symbol from there much quicker than looking for that between all these hundreds of of symbols and the same i click there and it's automatically inserted. If I have inserted a symbol that was not defined properly, it's probably the other way around. So we can just click here to flip it around. 180 or 90 or whatever we need. Then for the stairs, it's also very, very quick to, to create, for example, this kind of irregular stairs. So I, I just choose the, the limits. I can choose different limits, different elements, and the software will look for the closest intersection. But in this case, we would define it as follows. So first point, second point, and we will extend automatically. So I click again and again. So I define all the lines of my staircase. In case we have parallel lines, for example, imagine that we have from here parallel lines, I can define my orientation first. And now from here, it's checked, this one parallel, so I can click there and I will create parallel lines to the last orientation that I defined. And once a different orientation is coming, I can define it again and again, and then the the last step and we can have a very quick staircase in within seconds and finally uh, to to put some levels there i can choose different prefixes for example finish floor level and then we can start placing the 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 levels wherever we need them zero zero and there and there etc